Oke, okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. Uh, today uh, I am Inka. I'm, I am from uh, Office for International Affairs uh, at ERC University. Today I have two special guests with me. These two uh, young and beautiful ladies from India. Uh, but before I introducing them, let I, I let them to introduce themselves so we can get to know them better. Maybe I I give you the first opportunity to Miss uh, Nikki. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So I am Nikki Shepa uh, from India, from Dayanand Sagar Academy of Technology and Management, working as an assistant professor at the Department of Information Science and Engineering. Huh. And uh, here I'm working as a guest lecturer at the RC University at the Department of Informatics. It would be a Great pleasure to be here with you. Okay, thank you so much, thank you. And then, uh, Miss Surabi here. I, Surabi, uh, from India, working as an assistant professor in Dayanand Sagar Academy of uh, Technology and Management uh, in the Department of Information Science. And I'm working here as a guest lecturer for the Department of Informatics. Okay, so uh, how long have you been in uh, YRC University? So almost four months. Almost four months. Okay. So uh, how do you find YRC University in general? <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> we don't have words. We are lack of words to explain. Uh -huh. In fact, because the way the, you guys have treated and uh, with the beautiful learning skills, that is most important. Mm -hmm. You have a better skills like layer, which is to be incorporated in our in, uh, institution as well. Mm -hmm. And also... The beautiful thing uh, about the students, yeah. like they will cooperate us, they'll interact with us, mm -hmm. they'll start, you know, discussing with each other, like this is what the problem would be, this is what the solution would be. That makes us so interesting to uh, teach them alongside. So, and also we have to thank for your hospitality, oh, this yeah. amazing. <laughs> My pleasure, no yeah. worries. So uh, today maybe we will have a small talk about your experience uh, as an academia, mm -hmm. especially in STEM, mm -hmm. science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah, because usually we all know that usually this kind of field is specialized uh, for male academia. It's very you know the, the proportion of male academia in this specific field is huge. Yeah. And then maybe I really want to know your perspective about your role as an academia. How do you define your uh, role as a female academia in STEM? Yeah, uh, let me begin. I'll, I, being a girl child mm -hmm. of, and my family, so my parents wanted me to pursue the education. Mm -hmm. And... Um, well, I get into the technology, which was my favorite stream. Mm -hmm. so then I chose uh, and opted the computer science and engineering branch. Well, after the graduation has been done, mm -hmm. so I started uh, teaching as a profession with a great passion. Mm -hmm. So it was there from my childhood. So I took it as my profession. Then as and when the science and technology has been advanced, so I started exposed to it by learning the different technologies and the advancements in those science and the engineering and so-called like the technical streams. And I taught the same to the students as well because they have to um, get benefit from it. They have to get benefit to the society, mm -hmm. to the state, to the country too. So I never felt a negative attitude or inferior complex in doing that. Because I strongly believe in the belongingness of the job. Mm -hmm. So, and I strongly participated. I sincerely participated in all the matters, mm -hmm. which gives us the great pleasure in experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can say whatever we pursue, that has to give you the pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thereby, irrespective of the gender discrimination and all. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the happiness and I'm happy. Yes. Thank you. Nice. I mean, like you have your own stories about becoming uh, women in STEM. Yes. And what about you, Surabi? I mean, like, uh, do you have, do you find any challenges by being women in STEM? What's the, the hugest 
a challenge you find in your uh, oh, yeah. field? Uh, like challenges whenever it comes to a challenge. It is not only like working in a STEM, in all the fields, lack of confidence. We always thinking about like uh, whether we belongs to this area or not, or we deserve this or not. So these hurdles always uh, uh, making us uh, always a lack of uh, confidence will be there. And uh, um, for example, uh, uh, when it comes to understanding a material or when we want to give any uh, uh, speak about a topic, always we think that uh, we have to be expert in that topic, then only we can uh, uh, give that uh, uh, topic or we can talk about it. Or if we want to change the um, uh, what uh, the job and all every time we will be thinking whether we will fit into it or not so all these kinds of lack of confidence that is one of the biggest challenge other one is uh, maintain the work balance uh, work life balance so always like it is not like that we will be working under the same management mm -hmm. the management might change the colleagues might change the responsibilities will change in the workplace as well as uh, same responsibilities also change in the home also at home also so everything should be balanced and uh, uh, whenever the responsibilities changes at the workplace obviously automatically we have to spend more time in the workplace so all these things like uh, a few challenges then uh, taking care of a child i think that is one of the biggest challenge for mm -hmm. all the women uh, we cannot leave the kids at home alone uh, we have to search for the mates and all or some uh, women might search for the uh, uh, like uh, um, child care centers near the workplace and all so they might f uh, find a child care centers but that might be costly we cannot afford so because of that uh, women can uh, change their jobs or they can search for the part-time jobs and also they can change the residencies mm -hmm. so all these will affect the women career i yeah. think and also uh, like uh, the responsibilities and time management mm -hmm. uh, time management it is not like uh, uh, only the task what is given in the mm -hmm. workspace not only that starting from the beginning uh, uh, of the every day uh, at home also at workplace also they have to maintain the those uh, time or the responsibility they have a re different responsibility at home at workspaces and all so they have to um, all these kind of a challenges women has to face i think and it is not like that we cannot overcome all these things we have to focus on uh, what priority uh, for which task we have to give more priority so we can overcome that i think so i'm interested in your uh, quote like uh, previously that sometimes you feel that uh, you have assistance that yeah am i fit to this job yes kind of this so um can i say yes. it like it is like kind of uh impostor syndrome yes. so uh you can both uh answer this but how do you overcome uh, what's your strategies to conquer the impostor feelings here yeah. always like we have to think that whoever present in front of us uh, everyone is not perfect mm -hmm. So everyone are not perfect at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So obviously experience will make you learn more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to, uh, if you are uh, sometimes like overwhelmed or if you are frightened of something, so you can uh, 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 break down your task and you can focus on what mm -hmm. uh, what is a priority for you, which task you have to do it first. Later you can concentrate on something else, uh, which is less priority. Mm -hmm. So we can break down like that. Okay, so, so please, not I can uh, can I get back to Nikki because uh, I know Nikki uh, has a family. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> Surati previously <laughs> mentioned about the work life yeah. balance. Yeah. What's what is your strategy to have a work life balance yourself? All we think is to whenever we have a perfect balance in personal and professional life, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I actually wanted to take my example only. I have a kid and I left my kid at home <laughs> and I came here. Yes. So it's all about choosing the priorities. Not like I'm not saying that the kids are the second priority or the job as the first priority. It's not like that. Depending on your opportunities, depending on your surroundings, if they are able to take care of your child, at, your, at my family, at the support, or my parents' support, like the husband's support and everything. So it is possible to move on. That sort of support should be given to every woman. Mm -hmm. 
out there to bring their hard work or uh, to bring their inner strength to the world mm-hmm. because they make wonders yes we know we have, we have a great strength we have a we can do multitasking as well yes. but not all the time but still uh, it needs some you know the inner strength to move further you have to put a strength a step forward which creates wonders i okay. feel so okay all right and then uh, you know it's uh, it hurt very challenging to be women in stem yes. so How do you encourage women to dive into STEM? I believe self-esteem is uh, very important mm-hmm. because you should always start learning with great experience mm-hmm. and also think with a positive attitude and encourage the curiosity just like kids how kids will view and each and everything small things like they want they'll ask like what is this what is that and all like we have to think in that way because you don't have to have a sophisticated computers you don't have to have a fancy labs microscopes different toys <laughs> so just a great outdoor space will give you the learning experience thereby you can get into the fields of stem and also visit a museum that's also one of the experience you can get it like a hands on experience the exploration the experimentation mm-hmm. and during the childhood days just taste them the art of science and technology to the children mm-hmm. they have to sit together like parents and children sit together they have to discuss and understand what they have to do in their career what they have to choose like what they are passionate about if you are passionate about you will give 100% if you are not you will try you will do it with a lot of efforts that effortlessness has to be there irrespective of the gender mm-hmm. that is one thing and uh, you know young women uh, needs a uh, relevant relevant role models because we can become sometimes a role models sometimes we prefer look them look up the other idols as role models for example if i want to take marie curie mm-hmm. without her contribution in radio activities the uh, discoveries wouldn't be possible we should always encourage women in such a way that without your inputs it wouldn't have possible so that encouragement has to be given in all the aspects mm. okay yeah. so so rabi do you want to add something re- regarding no encouraging women in stem i think she has covered all that's all okay <laughs> so uh now we move to uh because i know you both are lecturers so do you have any specific uh pedagogical uh, strategies in teaching students not not only women student but also uh male and female students in stem because you know for me myself stem is sound very you know it's too sophisticated it's too scary for me how do you engage the student in class strategy yeah yeah um, uh, always like uh, whenever it comes to our strategies uh, uh, we always have to be more clear communication should be clear always and we have to manage the expectations uh, when it comes to like uh, 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 when it is like a normal classroom you can communicate with the students very well but when it comes to a virtual mode and all sometimes some of the faculties will be rude on the students also uh, whether if they don't switch on the cameras and all so if we are more clear like if we communicate in a, a proper way so we can uh, make students to understand why it is necessary mm-hmm. and also we can give as nikki was mentioned we can give some hands on session mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, uh, they can foster the creativity also uh it is not only like hands on session is not only like giving the uh computers or uh, uh, giving some hardware and uh, do some task on that so they can explore the world and they they have their own creativity so they can explore that i think and also uh, we can uh, uh provide this uh, flipped classroom model so it is not like always the teacher should teach you the students also will take that opportunity and if we give some topics for them obviously they will uh, uh, i think uh, they will present in a different way they will have more and more questions they can discuss with us or they can discuss with their friends also 
and then uh, uh, we can go for the project based learning mm -hmm. we can give some projects for the students uh, we can uh, 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 enhance their research uh, methods and all and uh, something like uh, uh, problem based learning so that uh, students can analyze the problem and they can find the solutions for that and also something like pure lead team learning so it is pl tl so the meaning of that is we can empower the students to teach other students mm -hmm. like uh, i always uh, uh, talk this uh, in my uh, at my institution actually like always students uh, e even though we teach for four months the same topics they won't get that they might be because of a concentration or might be because of time constraint see they they don't get what we are teaching but during the exam time one day before if one of his friend teach the same topic they will know that immediately so that is how like students only can help the other student i think so we can make use of alumni also for this so all these kinds of strategies yeah it sounds interesting yeah let me add on to it we have the other strategies which we have used in our institutions like role play so we made them like for example in the operating system as one of the course in uh, the information science branch we asked one to become a cpu scheduler mm -hmm. and few of them to become the processes oh. and few of them <laughs> like they were holding the chart like this oh. like i came in one millisecond <laughs> and the other went and i'm just being i mean i'm in a rest mode now so in that way of enacting makes be a students interesting to learn and they will you know memorize the concepts in a beautiful manner right. yeah that was the one thing we have practiced and also collaborative learning case studies we used to give the random examples real time uh, real time examples to them like i have given the you bring up the electric bill so i will tell you few of the values just add on and just let me know what is the output so in that way so they'll come now then whenever they go to home and they find the electric bill I know this kind of stuff. I know how the tip works. So in such a way the real time examples if we if we use in our classrooms it will be wonderful. Okay. I didn't know before that in STEM we can do the role play but your example was very interesting. So I think like it's it's good for the student as well to to try to be the machine. Be like, oh, no, I'm the yeah. uh, this one is the I'm the button, I'm yeah. the processor. Exactly. So they know uh, which goes first. Yes. So I think it's very uh, interesting, and maybe yeah. uh, the faculty of uh, information uh, technology here can try <laughs> that on <laughs> later on. <laughs> okay, this is my uh, last question, probably for you both. Uh, according to your experience uh, of teaching in ERC for the last four months, uh, how good do you think ERC is in encouraging women in STEM? So, first of all, uh, like I would like to at the outset. I would like to thank Yarsi University. Yeah. This is a beautiful university for providing the opportunity to be here mm -hmm. and to serve this institution for in for fabulous four months. I think I feel uh, we feel very fortunate enough. Mm -hmm. So because we saw the learning process, we saw the you know sharing the ideas, mm -hmm. I and mean, bonding with uh, good relationships. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, observing the tradition, your culture, mm -hmm. looking at your smiling faces, <laughs> it is so beautiful to see. And uh, I, I always admire and appreciate the values, the human values you give it for the people. And in turn, we greatly respect that. And especially note onto the hospitality. Mm -hmm. You have given us a great hospitality in that matter. So with with the great human value said with a great humanity so we are very much appreciated with that day right. along with that let me tell you with one thing like um, the classroom interaction with student was so polite mm -hmm. they were so delightful mm -hmm. they were so elegant and it was more interactive mm -hmm. that was wonderful in yrc and this is uh let me take let me put it in that way like um, the teaching never stops mm -hmm. the learning should never stops because life will never stops teaching you mm -hmm. because at all one day the hard work will pay you mm -hmm. so that is one thing and apart from it um we have 
Yeah. Uh, let yes. me continue. Yes. <laughs> I hope this, like this uh, wonderful uh, university has provided numerous mm-hmm. facilities and opportunities for women education also, I think, through which uh, uh, they encourage the women empowerment. Mm-hmm. And uh, not only that, uh, they uh, they have the IEEE women in uh, engineering. Uh, engineering. Uh, this is like a means to encourage the women's in international uh, stand- standards. And uh, uh, also, like, uh, we have observed in the gra- graduation day, uh, like, you were rewarding all the teaching and uh, uh, non-teaching uh, faculties and staffs uh, for their phenomenal service in the university. I think this will encourage other employees also to work for the standard of the YASC. Yes, <laughs> glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we 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 have noticed one simple simple things to the huge things which were very curious. <laughs> we are very curious like kids now. <laughs> so I think yeah. yeah so uh, for summarize, I think in general, YRC has doing great in terms of encouraging all the students in students. their own uh, passion uh, in their own field yes. and uh, to motivate them to follow their passion as well here by. Uh, let's say not only from the perspective from the perspective of the teaching yes. strategies, yes. but also uh, from the facilities uh, factors, yes. and also from the you know like the small gestures yes. that the university yes. provides to all the staff, the teachers, and exactly. also for the students. Yeah. And also like it is not only concentrating only on the education. Like uh, you have given us the opportunity to uh, like showcase our art and all those things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is very great. And we also saw there are few food stalls. They yes. were like, uh, you know, they have kept it on the day to increase students. Like they, it, even in small bit of piece, you were supporting in a huge manner. Yes. That makes uh, a different change or a huge change for them. Probably it may see like it may be small for few, but it is very huge. Yeah. The impact is very huge. Okay, thank you so much, Nikki and Zurabi, for the beautiful stories and encouragement for all of us here in ERC. So before we closing the session today, do you have any last words that you want to say to maybe ERC or your university back in India? <laughs> Please, yeah. of course. First of all, like we would like to thank the entire team of the Yasi University, the foundation, Dr. Jurnal Sudin, uh, Rector, Dr. Fasil Jalal. And uh, the entire management team of Yasi University, the vice rectors and deans of different streams, the Department of Informatics, uh, especially to Madam Umi and Madam Kusri, because uh, who have helped us in the immigration process. We are very thankful to them. And also all the teaching and non-teaching staff, faculties of Def- Department of Informatics. Oh, and for the Department of International Affairs, Madam Irika, <laughs> yes. Ms. Diana, and all the staff uh, members. Uh, I think Park uh, Slamat sir, <laughs> as well as uh, the all the staffs and the drivers who were picking and dropping <laughs> us each and every day. Thank you so much for that facility. So we would like to thank them by heart or the bottom of my our hearts. And then uh, also we would like to thank our institution, Dhanan Sagar Academy of Technology and Management. So, uh, yeah, chairman, we'll begin with the chairman, Dr. Hem Chandra Sagar. Vice chairman, Dr. Prem Chandra Sagar. Mm-hmm. Shri Gali Swami, secretary, sir. And joint secretary, Ms. Natasha, Ms. Tintisha, Mr. Nishant, Mr. Rohan Sagar. And our beloved principal, Dr. M. Ravi Shankar, sir. Uh, Dr. Sumitra Devi K. our Dean Academics. Dr. Nandini C., Vice Principal. Dr. Nandini Prasad, Dean Foreign Affairs and HOD of ISC. Mm-hmm. Dr. Madhumala R.B., she is the Coordinator of International uh, Foreign Affairs and uh, uh, who bought the MOU to our institutions. Without her, it wouldn't be possible. Special thanks to her and the entire team of ISE department, faculties and staff uh, staff members as well as students, HR team. So we would like to thank each and everyone for giving us the beautiful opportunity to serve this wonderful institution. And also the government of India and the government of Indonesia who helped us in uh, clearing the visas and the immigration process and the entire Dayanand Sagar institutions. A big heartfelt thanks to all of you.
Wonderful. <laughs> uh, I feel like I uh, think I, I I am on behalf of uh, Yersi University also would like to thank you uh, to you both mm-hmm. for it's it's very a very good experience wonderful experience for having you both here and you have uh, done a lot of good things here as well at Yersi University. Actually, you, I think you are our very first guest uh, international guest lecturer here. So. I think from the Yersi side, we also learn a lot from you both, from from the end to from the from the from the beginning to the end. I think for all the processes, uh, thank you very much for your good wo- good work and hospitality as well. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, uh, okay, uh, everyone. This is uh, the end of our discussion and small talk. I would like to see you again in another time. Thank you very much and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you.